Hey everybody, it's Buko Boys. What's up everybody? It's Dale and Derek DVO. It's episode 41. All right, we're getting into it. Um, first of all, we just ended with Father's Day. So happy Father's Day, brother. Happy Father's Day to you, brother. Thanks and happy Father's Day to our dad, uh, Gregory Van Otten. Happy He's fifty percent the reason why we're here, actually. Fifty percent, <laughs> and so um, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there, whether you're biological, step, um, adopted, whatever. If you're taking that father finger roll, even adopted if you're a single father. mom. Oh, I <laughs> got you. You're with me, okay? <laughs> you adopted your dad. <laughs> Can you do that? I don't know. <laughs> So anyway, um, happy Father's Day to all of you guys. And so what did we do for Father's Day? We took our father to Margarita Town. That's right, Margaritaville. <laughs> Went to the local Sausalitos and got some delicious margaritas. He always talks about margaritas for whatever reason. I don't know why. He loves them, I guess. But he likes them blended. <laughs> so he likes the blended ones. But first, before that, we took him to see Men in Black. Yeah, Men in Black International just came out uh, this weekend too, actually. This past weekend just came out. So um, we want to give our little review on it for you guys. So uh, we'll try to just avoid any spoiler alerts. We'll do a little review for you guys and maybe talk a little bit about the, the franchise itself. And pretty much what it stemmed from, the, the OG Men in Blacks. Yes. So, uh, first of all, Men in Black International, I found it very comedic. Yeah, it was funny. Chris Hemsworth, I find is, I think he's very funny. I think he's a funny guy. Yeah, and I was kind of wondering how they were going to do this Liam um, Neeson and, and Chris oh, yeah. Hemsworth. But I didn't know that there was going to be in another country, to be honest. Right. I thought it was going to be in America. And it was not. It was uh, taking place in London. So that's how it made sense. Because I was like, how are they going to have this movie without referencing Will Smith at all? Right. And they were able to. They pulled yeah, it off. Yeah, they, they had a little nod to them. Uh, what part? I don't remember. What? I'll tell you later. There's a nod. So you have to look up. There's a nod to Agent K. And I don't remember the, both their names. But there's a nod to them. And there's a nod to Thor in this. Yes, there was. That so was awesome. That's fun. So you guys <laughs> keep an eye out for that. Those two nods, right? So the first internet or the first Men in Black characters and Thor nods. So keep an eye out for those two. Well, what's funny about the Thor situation was in that scene i was kind of thinking i wonder if they're gonna do like a thor reference in this movie <laughs> because the way he's talking a lot just his his arrogance in this movie reminded me a lot of of yeah, how he right. plays you're thor right. you're right yeah and so how he was playing this i was kind of going in my head i wonder if they're gonna do something like reference thor somehow and they did right then and there i was like oh <laughs> shit well, i remember we both looked at each other we we're like yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got that one so that, that was awesome i mean um is it corny? Of course. Yes. Aren't all the Men in Black movies a little corny? Very corny. <laughs> They're all very corny. So you know what you're getting into. It's very MIB-esque. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, it follows the story, not the story, but just the rules of the MIB franchise they've been doing. But it's hilarious. I remember the other movies. I was cracking up in those too. It was, it's funny. It's really funny. Yeah. I don't think the, the last Men in Black movie, the third one... I don't think that one was as good Is as the other travel two? one. Yes. Okay. Yes, that's where he goes back in time with when Tommy Lee Jones was younger and he was played by Josh Brolin, which he did a really good job playing him. Yeah, <laughs> that was he good. did. They had the way like, like his serious demeanor. Yes. His he, like no nonsense. Yeah, he dry did a, comedy. <laughs> he did a good job. He did a good, good job. Going back around, Josh Brolin is Thanos in Thor in in the Avengers along with Thor, so. Oh yeah, same bringing, with uh, his around. co-star in this, the girl. She was also Tessa in Thompson, Asgardian. Also in Thor Ragnarok and Avengers. So is she, is she American or is she British? Because I couldn't tell. Oh, because her, her accent when she was playing in Asgardian, I mean, she sounded pretty European. I, like, I guess you would say she sounded like she could have been English or, from, I don't know, from the UK. Let's see. Tessa Thompson, that's her name. Yep, she was born in Los Angeles. Okay, because I was going to say her English in here sounded very natural. And then her voice also reminds me, are you on her, like, her IMDb? Did, yeah. Is she, in, is she play a voice in Big Mouth on Netflix? Big Mouth. 
thoughts. Let me see. Because when I was hearing her talk in, in this movie, all I kept seeing or hearing was this voice from that show Big Mouth on Netflix. It's not showing up. It's not? Okay. No. But her, it looks, seems like some of her ancestry, ancestry is part African-American, part Panamanian. From Panama. Oh, okay. I can see that. But we know Chris Hemsworth is Australian. Right. Liam Neeson, you know where he's from? Ireland. No. Well, I, I want to double check now before I say it. I, I think it's Canada. <laughs> is he? No way. Where is he from? Ireland, you're right. I told you. Why was I thinking Canada? I don't know, but... Did his wife die in Canada? Maybe that's what... Or maybe he filmed a movie there? I don't know. <laughs> Like, I wonder if it was I don't know how you would think he was Canadian with his accent. That sounds very Irish. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, it does. He's awesome, though. I love the Indies. Yeah. And so there's a twist in this movie. And it turned out one way of thinking it's going one way, and it took, it took a turn another way. So it keeps you on your toes a little bit. I thought I had it figured out, but things changed in the movie, and I'm like, oh, yeah. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Um... Yeah, but it was, there's a, if you see the trailer, there's a little green guy. Oh, yeah, the pawn. Pa yeah, P Pawnee. And he's, <laughs> uh, who is that guy? He he was hilarious. Yeah, that guy was pretty funny. I like that guy. Um, I mean, for as as dangerous of situations as they're in all the time, they keep cracking jokes. That's <laughs> <laughs> true. Because they're like, true. they don't have any special powers. Like, they, they're mortal. They can die very easily. I knew it. I knew who Pawnee was. Who? I thought it was him. I wasn't sure. Um, Camille Nanjiani. Who's that? He's a comedian. He's hilarious. Oh, okay. The Indian guy that's yeah. in a lot of, um... Kevin Hart movies, I think. Um, he's in a lot of movies. I don't want to say. They're comedic movies. I don't know if they're... That genre with, like, Seth Rogen's group of guys. He'll show up in with them, but he's not... Oh, I'm trying to... He was in Big Sick. Uh, Fist Fight with... Yeah, he was in Fist Fight seen him in a lot of stuff but yeah i knew it was his voice i wasn't 100 percent sure like central intelligence and 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 uh there's another camera movie I think. okay so that's his voice that's i knew it. i could tell it was him i've actually heard his stand-up and it's hilarious he's pretty funny he's on uh, actually some of his stand-up albums were on uh prime music that's where i listened to some of his stand-up albums and it was i was rolling it was pretty funny i found it pretty funny <laughs> so yeah i think that movie was was pretty hilarious yeah it was action-packed corny of course so i mean you got to know there's going to be some corny. yeah it follows moments. all the other mib kind of how they do it, it right it was all of that so you kind of know what you're getting into um i i, I give it a thumbs up i, I, so I say watch it and i mean in this movie they i'm not going to give anything away because this was in the trailer but she she goes and finds the men in black so she like right. she becomes um her parents get the uh, neuralized. Yeah, neuralized. And she I'm neutralized. She doesn't see it, and and so it doesn't affect her. So she knows what happened, and she she spends her the rest of her life training to find this organization of men in black to become a part of it. So she's like, yeah. high scoring in, in FBI training and and all that. CIA but, training. Yeah, but she doesn't want the job because she's looking for the. The other department. Yeah, she doesn't know what it's called. She yeah. just knows it's that. And so that everyone keeps rejecting her, saying she's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> so she eventually finds them, and that's how the movie goes. She's like, I found you, so I don't really need to apply. Because that's what they said. They said, we recruit. And she goes, well, I found you, so I don't really... I found you guys. Well, yeah, so the first <laughs> premise that I got from this movie, um, based off of that, kind of made me think, oh, great, this is going to be really horrible. Because of that, like I found you, so you gotta hire me now. But then they kind of played into that whole thing where she's like a high-ranking um, recruit for for FBI, an FBI and, CIA. and CIA and all that. So that makes more sense. And then it does show her go through like a, some type of they, they fast forward it so you don't actually have to deal with it. It's like a monologue of her shooting practice, right? So she does do some type of a training. So so they they cover it. And yeah. They didn't piss me off. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and Chris Hemsworth, he's like this rogue agent that he's like, I'm, I'm the best agent. I just, I do it my way. And 
So then, then they kind of par partner up, um, and then they, they got a good chemistry. They play off each other. Well, they're as guardians, you know. Yeah, they are as guardians. <laughs> as guardians of the galaxy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I give, it, I give it a thumbs up. You give it a thumbs I up? I give it a thumbs up. Yeah. It, I would it, say it, go see it. It's it. funny. It's entertaining. Take the family. Go by yourself. Whatever you want to do. Date night. It, it's a funny movie. Do you remember most of the Men in Black movies? Definitely the first one, because I watched it. Multiple times? Multiple times. For me, it's still the best one. 100% the best one. I did, I really did like that, but I did not like, so you remember the guy that, he, it was like a, what is he, like a giant cockroach or something? That's yeah. in that guy's body? Yeah, uh, Vince Doforio. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it was the way he was talking a lot of the time, like, <laughs> you know, doing all yeah, that. Yeah. And then his wife, like, not even realizing something's wrong with him. <laughs> that was bad country. <laughs> that was really bothering me. Was it? <laughs> yes, it was really bothering me. The way he was talking, like, I know... That was probably just him improvising and doing that on his own. Yeah. I wasn't a fan of it. Sugar. <laughs> yeah, sugar. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> that that was driving me crazy. I did like the movie still, but just his his yeah, improvisation, whatever. It was it was bothering me. Okay. <laughs> but I don't remember much about the second movie. What was the second movie about? It, I think it's just they just they just kept going with it. Just more aliens. It's just a bigger. It's Johnny Knoxville and that Johnny Knoxville, woman, um, that evil alien woman. Okay, is that yeah. that's where the pug is? The pug came in in the second one. I think so. I think so. Was that the same pug in this new one? Oh yeah, yeah. Is the same pug? Oh yeah, for sure. Look out for the pug. He can make a comeback. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which, which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and also Tessa Thompson, like she's, you know those like those fake magazine articles on the racks? Yeah. Like mother gives birth to... Well, yeah, they, they mentioned that in the other older Men in Black movies. Oh, the, the tabloids, yeah, yeah. the National Enquirer, they're like, those are real. Yeah, that's <laughs> right, you're right, you're right. I forgot about that, that's right. Yeah. So she's like already like reads through these, like she has them on her desk and stuff. And, mm -hmm. and she kind of refers to them. It was, it was funny. But I, I really like the first one, you know, how they recruited Will Smith's character. Mm -hmm. And he's just like, no, no, I'm a police officer. Like, what do you, what's this organization? This, this, this is nonsense. Then he sees like an alien. He's like, whoa, what? And Tommy Lee Jones is say, telling him, they're everywhere, man. <laughs> like, they, you don't what, even know. Oh, one thing about this with the Men in Black, because they do the same thing over there in London, like they did at the Men in Black organization in America, where they give everyone agent and then your name is a letter. Right. There's obviously way more agents than just the 26 in the alphabet right but i wonder are some of them ages but then some of them are just like employees because there's some they're just employees and they're like but they're they all have IT to be stuff. i think they all have to be agents to be in there and they all have to go mm -hmm. by a different just be just to know of the organization altogether because you're not going to live the civilian life anymore yeah, they're called pawns maybe <laughs> either way still there's still when you see how many agents there are there's still way more than 26 so the only one that's different out of just the letters was the leader, which was Liam Neeson. He's in charge of the whole London branch, but he was Agent T, but because he's in charge now, he's high T. Right. So. Maybe there's low. The, who's low, low T? <laughs> who's the low T? You are. Yeah, great. <laughs> You're the great. Low Don't you remember <laughs> episode yeah. one? That's exactly. <laughs> That's what I was trying to get to. <laughs> but anyways, um... <laughs> Why isn't there, and it's always the, the first letter of their first name is, okay. is their agent. So there's like multiple, there, you know, there's going to be multiple agent M's for Mike's and multiple agent J's for Joe's just and stop. John's. And stop. I can't. I can't. Just that stop. shit right there is what bugs no, me. Stop. <clears throat> I wish they would have just went somewhere else with the agent names. If they could have gave them <clears throat> something else. Because then they just gave me something to be pissed about. Well, I got something else to tell you. Uh oh, what is it? This whole movie's not real. So oh, I'm shit. I'm sorry. Is it? No? <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, it is based off of real stuff. Yeah. And you didn't even know mm. about it. No. We'll, we'll keep talking about the franchise here, though. <clears throat> so do you have a like, favorite part of the, of, of, of the Men in Black movies? Yeah. Besides the music video that Will Smith made? Oh, you mean the epic music video? Yeah. yeah. Um, remember in the first movie, when he blows that alien's head off, Okay. And it just, it regenerates right away. Oh, yeah. That scene, I remember when that happened, because, I mean, what, what year did that come out? Like, late 
mid to late 90s, right? Right. And so we were still like middle school, high school age. I was in high and school. And I remember, so I was like way into these at the time. Will Smith was at his peak doing Independence Day and all that. And when this came out, and that scene where he just, <coughs> he questions that guy, he gives him a bunk answer and he just blasts his head oh, yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, whoa! Like in a pawn shop or something? Yeah, or like, a, yeah, some type of shop. Yeah. And then his head regenerates. I was like, yeah. oh, he knew that was going to yeah, happen. Yeah, he was going to have to. Like, that guy, he just murdered someone. Yeah, I know, that's what I was thinking. Like, Will Smith just straight capped this dude. <laughs> but, um... You don't have the rights to the song? <laughs> I actually like the song. I forgot about it. Was it was catchy. <laughs> but Will Smith's raps are always just uh, really slow and generic. They're, they're catchy, though. <laughs> I think I had that whole album now that I think about it. Did you really? Yeah. I don't remember that. I think it was the Getting Jiggy With It album. Did you really have that? I did. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, about you? Do you have a favorite scene? Um, my favorite scene would be... I think it was when he was chasing, it was like when he was getting recruited, he was chasing somebody and they, all of a sudden they scaled the wall. Oh, it was like at the beginning yeah. of the movie, I think, too. It was, he... And he was, he was just like, was like, whoa, what just happened? I kind of, that for me was like the cool part, because it was like the beginning and it already showed them like, okay, we're getting right into this right Didn't now. Didn't he catch him and that's why Tommy Lee Jones wanted to recruit him? I don't remember. Because he ended up like catching him, he was able to catch him without any use of technology or whatever. Remember that time that he shot him down from his airplane and they crashed and he opened up the lid of the UFO and it popped down, he punched it, knocked it down and dragged it with his parachute? Yeah, that scene. Yeah. <laughs> America. <laughs> Just kidding, that was Independence Day. Yep. It was very right, like all at the same time too that all those movies came out. I think he also got asked, and he, I think he mentioned this in an interview, he got asked to play Neo in The Matrix. And he turned it down because he was doing all these movies. Okay. And he's like, I don't want to be known as that guy, the sci-fi guy. Okay. And he turned down the movie, The Matrix, and Keanu Reeves got it. And that, you know what that turned into. Right. So he regrets that. Yeah, I don't blame him. That's big. <laughs> that's a big cult. That's a big cult. Following. Yep. Probably bigger than Men in Black. Yeah, I think it's sure. bigger than Men in Black. <laughs> For sure. But it was, it was a great franchise. I liked it. Good movie. Yep. But anyway, like I was telling you, I I didn't put this together when, when I watched the first movie. This whole movie franchise stems from an actual, not an actual, well, supposed organization that is referred to as Men in Black. And then the writers of this movie just took that and just made it into a whole new world of, yeah, there was a great alien in migration into the earth um mm -hmm. and we have this organization that kind of filters them we keep tabs on them to make sure that they're i don't know working and paying taxes i don't know <laughs> and not like consuming humans. regulating regulating their visitation like visas like intergalactic yeah, visas yeah yeah good one yeah that, that's kind of what in this movie that's kind of what they are right yes they're like regulating aliens coming and going from planet earth and then when they get out of hand yeah, so it's like the, the men in black are the yeah, the men in black are the alien police. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but there is a supposed organization called the Men in Black, and hopefully they're not gonna come after us after talking about this on our podcast since we're so widely known. Right, but, worldwide. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I kind of uh, I should have pieced it together a long time ago. I didn't really piece it together. But that's basically how these movies were started. From was this supposed organization called Men in Black that appear when there are UFO sightings or any type of alien-esque out of this world phenomena. I would say it's more when, uh, when people have an extreme encounter and they start talking about it, and that's when they get an, a visitation from these people. And yeah. they, like they, they were public. given the name Men in Black <laughs> later on, decades after they'd been talked about because it was like, they don't have a name for them, they don't represent anything. So they just right. started calling them men in black. Because they were wearing black show suits. Up. Just like in the movie. They were wearing black suits, black ties, white button-up yeah, shirts. Well, they, they, they took that, what the description that everyone has given them that they've had encounters with and used that in the movie. Exactly. So we got a few stories that we want to share that we've, we've done some research. Uh, so we want to share a few stories that we found. And um, 
But anyway, like, so what do you think? Well, I would say the first the first known visitation from a okay. man in black was back in 1947. There was a guy, Howard Dahl. All right. And he was visited, told, um, I can't remember what he was told, told to stop doing whatever he was doing. Pretty much, it was the first um, known encounter with somebody dressed in all black, very tall, very thin, very pale, and very to the point of do not talk about aliens anymore. Do not talk about UFOs anymore. And then it was about, um, I want to say into the 50s, when there was a Dr. Doc, Dr. Hopkins. I want to say it was the 50s. Do you remember the whole Barney and Betty Hill story? No. So they were they they were abducted by aliens. She this was you know I can't remember what year this happened, but anyways, they uh, they were abducted. They were a, that interracial couple, and they made a movie about it later on. James Earl Jones played him. Maybe. But maybe. um. Well, what happened was they saw something in the sky. They ended up getting abducted. They lost time. They they didn't know they were abducted. They just lost time. And it yeah. was later on that under hypnosis that they were retelling the accounts that happened to them. Right. Betty Hill was actually able to draw. Um, so she a white star, woman? Yeah. Okay. She's, um, some what are those star thing constellations? Oh. That nobody had even seen yet, because that's where the aliens told her they were from. She drew this constellation before it had even been discovered. I think it was a decade later that they finally found this constellation and it matched her drawing. Okay. But anyways, um, this Dr. Hopkins was visited by Men in Black. All right. This doc Dr. Hopkins uh, was working on the case of Barney and Betty Hill and some other cases. But um, anyways, he was visited by this man in, in black who had no hair, no eyebrows, very pale skin. Um you know, wearing the black suit and everything. Anyways, he was talking to him and telling him pretty much, showing, putting fear into this guy. He okay. pulled out these coins and showed one coin was like a, uh, like a gold or a bronze coin or whatever. He said it started changing in front of him and it went from one color to like silver and it phased it like the way it turned blurry and it and changed colors. Yep. Well, he then made it disappear in his hand. Yeah. And told him, I need you to to dis make all the files on Barney Hill disappear. And no, no, I don't know if you, if you knew this, but what he said was, I can predict what's in your pocket. Oh, yes. Yes, that's right. He told him he could predict what was in his pocket. Told him it was coins. Two pennies. Two pennies. That's what it was. Two yeah. pennies. Anyways. Um, and he made them go from that bronze color to silver. To silver, that's and right. And dissipate, yeah. And then he told him, I can make uh, this... Just like, uh, he's like, yeah, I just made this disappear just like Barney Hill's heart disappeared. And uh, the way that Barney Hill died was, uh, I can't remember what it was, pulmonary oh, something. Interesting. But, um, but yeah, so he says this out loud, which was pretty crazy. So this guy obviously does what, what, the, huh. what he was asked and deleted, burned all the files on Barney Hill. Wow. And uh, yeah, he was pretty much scared after that. Wow. That's pretty interesting. Yeah, I heard that story. Um, hey, interesting. So I got another story. But first of all, you, you like talking about that. What, like, what do you think? Do you think like constellations and aliens are out there? I was oh, just yeah. looking. On our episode 15, we talked about like our UFO experiences that mm -hmm. we had. Um, so that was episode 15, if you want to go back and listen to that. But uh, it was end of 2018. But yeah, I mean, obviously, I, th I think there are aliens out there well you think about it. she was able to draw a constellation that we physically have not even found yet right we find it 10 years later boom there that's the one she drew yeah that itself proves way too much that mm -hmm. itself is like wow that's that's a huge wow yeah. factor right there but every time we see a star that's essentially a sun yes and you think okay we're not seeing all the little planets revolving around that star. yes and you mean floating rocks Floating rocks, <laughs> perfectly round rocks, flat. <laughs> perfectly flattened rocks. No. But anyways, um, pretty much why the Earth has life on it is because we are the perfect distance from the sun, which eventually over time we're going to drift farther away or closer, but each, whichever way we're drifting, yeah. we're going to drift out of that and we are no longer going to contain life on this planet anymore. So if you think about that and other planets 
in our solar system have been where we are now. If you think about, there could have been life on other planets in our solar system, just billions of years have passed and then it, the, it's turned to nothing because it's too far away or too close to the sun now. Yeah. Um, which eventually is going to happen in this planet. So other stars that we're seeing in the galaxies... Don't worry, guys. Might be millions of years from now. <laughs> yeah. Not in our lifetime. That's for damn sure. But um, if you look at that and think about there's planets revolving around each one of these stars. And yes. If, yes. If one of them is the perfect distance from the sun, right. it's going to inhabit life. And if you think, okay, there's a dominant species on that planet, like we're the dominant species on this planet, and how fast we've advanced in just the last 200 years... Just the last 10 years, how much we've advanced. Really? Right. Well, I mean, you think 200 years ago, we had no technology. Right. But in the last two years, how much we've been... Like, oh, yeah. In the last now 10 that years, we've had it... Imagine... Yeah. So we can yeah. even say the last 25 years, how much we've advanced oh. in just 25 years. But, I mean, you think, about another, you think about another race of, of, uh, on another planet that's, you know, in charge of that planet who has been around, say, millions of years before us. So you think about how much technology could advance from where we are now into two million years. Mm -hmm. So you think that's where they are. Well, they're, what do you think we do when we find a new species on our planet? We study the shit out of it. Yeah. So what do you think they're doing when they find a planet, another planet with life on it? Like, whoa, what's Let's this? study the shit out of it. Let's probe their buttholes. <laughs> Let's see what they're made of. <laughs> but, you know, and you just mentioned that that uh, missing time that happens a lot in these stories of possible abduction. Well, that's where the neuralizer comes from. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, as how it's what are they doing? Yeah, it's like oh yeah, you know, good point. Are they taking someone up, neuralizing them after they're done with them, and bringing them back? Or imp a lot them? of a lot of yes, a lot of people have found uh, metals that are not found on this planet yeah. inside their bodies. Yeah. And uh, so that's like, and then when they remove them, they end up finding another one somewhere else later. Right. And uh, so they keep tabs on some people that they're studying. It's their way, yes, just like what we do to animals yeah. that we find that we're studying. We chip them and study their movements. I know it's pretty. It's pretty. It's pretty wild. It it's is wild. wild. Now, and and like I said, or like I've said, you know, are all these church stories true? I don't know. But even if. Out of all of these stories, one is true. That's unbelievable. It's, it's just pretty one of the stories. Significant. Are true, you know what I mean? Yeah. So another story I have is um, from a podcast I listened to. I'm trying to remember what podcast it was. It, I want to say it might have been. The, it's called The Confessionals. I think it's that podcast. The paranormal one. Yeah. And um, so this lady had seen a UFO, and I believe I can't remember if she called it in or not. But anyway. Black SUV pulls up to her house. Now, I can't, I don't know exactly what her house looks like, but this is how I imagine it. Um, I think it's like out in the countryside, you know what I mean? It's like out pretty rural, mm -hmm. you know? And black SUV rolls up. I have, I just kind of have this imagination where she's got like a small fence, maybe waist high around the perimeter of her yard. That's just kind of what I envision. And she's got a fence. Um, I can't, you know, maybe a white picket fence or just like a wooden fence. And these two guys come out, men in black, right? Black suit, white shirt, black tie, black bowler hats. They go to approach her and she says as they get out, they are pretty tall. They look very similar to each other. Like they look very pale, like they're white, white, long, skinny, um, that's a lot of reports are like that, almost like they look similar. And she says, you know, she they walked through my gate and came to approach me. Walk through as in not open it, but yeah, walk through. Like didn't open the gate and walk through, but like walked through a wooden fence. And she just kind of threatened them, get, get out of here, like get out of my property. And they left. So, you know, she tells the story. She was telling the whole story about a UFO sighting. I can't remember the whole story of that UFO sighting, but I do remember this story she told about the men in black. And I didn't catch that either. You know, when you just said, like, walk through, I didn't catch that. The host actually had to interject and say, so when you say, like, walk through, like, what do you mean? She was like, no, like, they didn't open the gate. They walked through. Yeah, I want to say I heard something very similar to this, but it was a guy being interviewed. And he was talking about a chain link fence. And when these guys approached him, 
they they went through his chain link fence and didn't open a gate. They just he said they like phased in. They just yeah. kind of like blurry like blurred out and then were it back in focus on the other oh, side interesting. of the fence. Yeah. And the way they talked to him was like they were just really definite of, of what they were saying and it didn't matter what he said, they would just kind of repeat themselves as if what he was saying wasn't making sense to them or they weren't going to even listen to anything he said. Mm -hmm. It's just they had what they had to say and they were going to continue to say it until he got it without, without any type of reasoning or, or listening on their end. They were just there to say, this is what you're going to do. You need to stop doing this. You need to do this. And, and when he would say something, they would just repeat themselves. Do you think the men in black are a governmental entity or their own entity i think they are both actually so get this this like i've been regulated yes interesting so i've learned i don't know how factual this is uh -huh. but since the the crash landing of roswell uh -huh. and then our technology has skyrocketed since then yeah and they say it was because we did a deal with aliens that the u.s government has a deal with the, with aliens that say, give us technology, you know, and we'll give you people to to study with, and then we'll keep them quiet. You know, you guys do whatever studying you want to do. You can use our people, but give us the technology. Hmm. And so, whenever somebody is being studied and they come out, I think it's both a mix of government, but instead of the government having its own agency with with badges and stuff, right? It maybe it could be these aliens coming to these people represent you know doing the work of of what the government wants so that's my next question to you do you think these men in black are sometimes out of space aliens based off of hearing what some of these people are saying saying that their skin is very pale that they have no hair whatsoever mm -hmm. and the looks of them tall t super tall and skinny and sometimes i've heard also heard that their skin is like clammy almost looks oh, not like me. human skin yeah. it's like looks softer it looks different um also on this when, it, when they talk about the skin looking different um when it I remember that whole story of that stardust ranch yes yes so maybe we'll do an episode on stardust ranch one Ooh, day good one but good one. i'll just talk about this one part of it where he was killing these grays that were on his property grays meaning small the, gray aliens. small gray alien the almond shaped eyes the Big heads, shrink, go, teardrop. So he took heads, some yeah. of these samples from him killing these aliens, these greys. Took that to a lab to get tested. His buddy tested it. His he had a buddy that was a professor there, or a scientist there. He studied it and said, "This tissue is the smoking gun. This is the smoking gun that aliens exist. It is both flesh and chlorophyll. It's it's got hemoglobin and chlorophyll inside this blood, which." It's not even really blood anymore. It's chlorophyll and hemoglobin, which is, you know, what plants Plant carry based. for blood yeah. and what humans carry for blood mixed together as one different animal now. It's like its own creature. So hybrid. Uh, yeah. It's like, so it made me wonder uh, if, if these greys are even really these aliens bodies or if they're just sending their consciousness in this body they created so they can kind of like an avatar for them. And they're just, and that's why they don't fight back and they're getting yeah. killed. And it's like no big deal for them. They don't need to fight back. It's not their real body. But anyways, um, so that tells me that skin tissue yeah. that he tested. Oh, yeah. After that per, uh, scientist tested that, the scientist ended up dying mysteriously right yeah. afterwards. And all his um, samples and all his files of everything completely vanished. Yeah, we should do, a, yeah, we should do an episode on that. Uh, Sorry, Dust Ranch and... The dark side of the moon. I got some stories. On yes. That. I got some stories. On yes. That. So, uh, as you so can tell, yes. listen to a lot of podcasts and <laughs> paranormal shows that we watch. So that tells me, yes, that that these men in black could be, if their skin is that different, they could be aliens. Yeah. That the, yeah. The, that they're being sent to tell hush these people. Yeah. Just imagine, like in the men in black movies, some of the men in black are humans from Earth, and some are aliens from outer space. Kind of, obviously they're very noticeable, <laughs> but maybe it's kind of like that situation where they're humanoid, not humans. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Humanoid. So, yeah, interesting. What other, what other stories do you have? Okay, so there was another doctor. So a lot of a lot of people that have came forward about like these men in black approaching them uh -huh. have been like doctors or professors that were studying ufology or different alien encounters people have had. And then all of a sudden they get visited. Now when we say UFOs, we are talking about like outer space, not necessarily we don't know what to describe it. We're, we're, we're definitely talking outer space. UFOs. Yeah, we're talking about extraterrestrial yeah. spaceships. So this doctor, he created this branch called the Flying Saucer Bureau. And it was all about <laughs> studying That's flying funny. saucers. Because okay. that tells you how old this is. Yeah. So it was the 60s. <laughs> right. So he created this Flying Saucer Bureau to study <laughs> more about them and all that. Well, he ends up getting visited by these men in black oh, who pretty much threaten his life and tell him he needs to cease and desist all investigations, leave it like stop this bureau from ever becoming a bureau, like just end it all now, blah blah blah. He doesn't go into detail what was said to him. Everyone just says he changed after that. Like he was not the same person, person anymore. Okay. He was living in a, a life of fear and anxiety. Because they, maybe they threatened him? Yeah, so pretty much he is a completely different person until he, I think he died not too, like, not too long ago, maybe 15 years ago is when he passed away. But up until the point he died, he was um, living in fear. Wow. After, after that encounter. So for that long, that's decades and yeah. decades. Yeah, wow. um, There was another one where this guy, Paul Miller, he, he just happened to be driving down the road and witnessed this disc shaped object uh -huh. that was illuminating the sky land and at, in right in front of him so he's he stopped and looking at this thing and he said two humanoid creatures come out of this thing oh wow he pulls out his gun and shoots one of them and hurts it and he says he booked it and, and drove away but when he looked down he realized three hours had passed from when he wow. shot and, and shot this thing and turned around wow. and drove off three hours are, are missing so there we go talking about that time loss again. Yeah, so anyways, he doesn't mention it to anybody. He kept quiet about it. He just went about his day like normal. Well, he ends up showing up to work the next morning like normal. Just, he had not said anything. Well, there were there was men in black waiting for him at work. Wow. So they take him, they take him off to the side somewhere and they talk to him, telling him that uh, they, they pulled his, they already have his file. Which mm. he's just like, I have a file. <laughs> and they, they said they knew everything about what happened last night. And he's like, wow. he hadn't even told anybody. So there, he was just telling him that uh, they don't want him talking about it. They don't want him telling anybody about it. You know, f probably fear, like, put fear in him, you know. Well, he doesn't say anything for years later. It was years later until he finally spoke up about it and finally grew some balls to, to say what had happened. Okay. But, um, but yeah, they... It was crazy that they they already knew everything about him, and he never even said shit to anybody. Wow. So he was, because a lot of times people are getting visited because they're saying something, yeah. and it brings attention to them, and yes. that's what sends, you know, oh, high alert, better just, shut them up. Just like what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this guy hadn't even said anything yet. It was the next day, right? The very next morning, wow. without telling a soul, and hmm. they're already there. They knew where he worked. They knew all that. Without him even mentioning it, which was yeah, because it scary. makes you wonder. They're probably keeping tabs on, or I hope to think they're keeping tabs on these flying saucers, these UFOs. So they, they're maybe or entering our orbit. I don't know our gravitational pull. I don't know. You know, our, I don't know what they. Hopefully, they're monitoring that, and then they find where it lands, and they go investigate. And they well, we should do in the woods. I don't know. We should go out to Dugway and watch the skies. Because whenever they yeah. do testing at Area Dugway, 52. Yep, Area 52, right in our, what's that, a two hour drive, two and a yeah, half hour drive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So anytime they do testing out there, I've been told you watch the skies and it's just crazy with stuff going on. And I also learned if you have an infrared camera and you watch the skies, you can see more. Hmm. There was, uh, so Ben, our buddy Ben Hansen. Yeah. So uh, do you remember his little night vision stuff? Yes, yeah. yes. So they were using it on an episode of, uh, what's that Fact new one? Fate? No, no, what's that, that's that new show that just came out with Jack Osborne. Oh. And Katrina Weidman. It's uh, Portals to Hell. Okay. So anyways, they did one here in Utah, in, in uh, Duchesne, in Uinta Basin. There's uh, right by Skinwalker Ranch. And 
because of all the weird stuff that happens there. Well, anyways, Ben Hansen was using that infrared camera. Okay. And with your visual bare ass eyes, bare -ass eyes. you don't see nothing. But with this infrared camera, you are seeing this thing flying through the sky. Ah, this little, and it looks like a little, almost like a little triangle with three illumination points coming from mm. it. That it's cloaked because you can't see it with your naked eye. But with the infrared, you're seeing the heat signature coming from it. Yeah. So that, so maybe if we get some of those infrared cameras from Ben, we go to Dugway and watch the skies out there. That would be pretty dope. That, that would be interesting. They, I mean, they do call it Area Fifty Two. Yep, that's for a, that's a reason. A, um, a lot of I, crazy stuff going on in fact, there. Uh, I had to go, not exactly Dugway, but close to Dugway. I was in Stockton, uh, Utah area, and uh, I was driving through, and I saw this big mural on the side of this building. It was purple with an alien, and it said Area 52. And I was like, I got to check this place out. So I walk in there, and it's a soda shop. And it was <laughs> a super cool little soda shop. And inside, they painted it kind of, galaxy-esque spaceships and they had they had a pinball game of like a ufo pinball game um all the themes are are, are alien they make soda and hamburgers and pastries and it's a, it a cool shot See, that's a that's cool they're, they're kind of like i that's what i imagine roswell is like every shop in roswell yeah like they kind of capitalize on that mm -hmm. alien yeah that yeah, makes sense uh do you have any more before we have the the kind of um no that was it for these okay. um yeah, that was it for these stories that I took notes on. So if you want to finish with that last story. Yeah, so we got a story that you just found right now. We found a link on YouTube. And it was a story from Dan Aykroyd. Ghostbuster himself. The Ghostbuster himself. And he... The first... What was it? The first succubus on, on a movie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the first succubus encounter in... Uh, and in fact, right, the Blues Brothers, he's one of the Blues Brothers. That's the kind of outfit they're wearing, right? Yeah. Black suit, white shirt, black tie, bowler hat. Mm -hmm. You know? Anyways, pretty interesting. Anyways, tell the story. In 2015, Sci-Fi bought uh, a show from them. Yes, he had an idea for a show. Yeah, for and it was just about UFOs. Actually, I'm very curious why he wants to do a show like that, though. That makes me kind of start thinking now. Ooh, why? Yeah. Right? Maybe he's really into it. Maybe he's really into it. I don't know. But anyway, he they're starting to film a couple episodes for this new show. I'm guessing he'd be the narrator. That's just kind of my guess. He's got a good voice. He's the host of the show. Yeah, yeah. the host, narrator maybe. Um, so anyway, he steps outside because he gets a phone call from Britney Spears. Yes, so he's we're random. A <laughs> random part of the story. But. Well, he said they were in, in between interviews. So they just filmed one interview. They were about yeah. to film another one. Uh -huh. And he got that call from Britney Spears, stepped outside. Said they'll say, answer the phone call. Basically, she was calling him. She was asked to do Saturday Night Live, and she wanted him to kind of co-host. Maybe, I don't know if she was going to be the host or musical guest. And, and for him, anyway, she wanted to work with Dan Aykroyd on SNL. So she calls him up. He's on the phone. He might have been out having a little smoke break, too. So he's on the phone with, with Brittany, and they're kind of talking little details. Like, yeah, yeah, sure, Brittany, come on. He says he looks over, and he sees this black SUV again. No, no, he said there was nothing there. He looked over. There's a black SUV. Yeah. Guy steps out of the yeah, back guy, seat. Yeah, the guy steps out of the back seat and he said it was really tall and just gave him a mad dog look. Mm. Just kind of mean mugging him. Mm. And so he just, he, he sees it, he looks away. It probably registers a little bit like, that's odd. He looks back, he says within maybe 40 seconds? No, half a second. Oh, half a second? Looks back, gone. The car and the guys are gone. And he's on the... I'm guessing this is 42nd York, I Street. 42nd Street. Just the way he said it, I'm guessing New York. I don't know. But uh, he said, it's a big SUV. He said, I definitely would have heard it drive off. If it made a U turn, I definitely would have seen that. But no, it was just mere seconds. I look over, I see the situation. This guy gets out, gives me a mean look. I look away, it kind of registers. I look back, gone. Yeah, he said he was mid sentence. So. Saying the same sentence as he looked away and looked back. So that, you know, half a second. He said it was about a half a second that he looks at this guy getting out of the back seat, gives him a mean look, turns away, says like one or two words, turns back, gone. So he's like, that guy, he's like, I would have seen him get in the car or like heard the car door close or seen them or seen drive, them drive off by. or seen them make a U-turn or something. 
because I'm guessing he's looking in front of where they're pointed, so yeah. he would see them drive in, in his eyesight. So as he turns back to the car, it's just completely vanished. Yeah, so very interesting. And he says, oh, and then, so he goes back in to, you know, continue, and then a, a couple hours later, they get the, the sci-fi call, sci-fi channel calls and says, show's been canceled. Cease, We're not going yeah, ahead. cease all recordings. Yeah, cease, stop all recordings. We're not going ahead with that. Stop. And he's like, I know what I saw. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling they had something to do with this because yeah. it had it was all about UFO. So maybe they went and visited Sci-Fi's headquarters and scared them. Right. Who knows? Maybe they heard seeing what's going on and you know what they're recording, or maybe that specific or the story they were interviewing. Who knows? Yeah, maybe that people they were interviewing yeah. were being studied at the time, and they don't want Ooh, the, yeah. they were they don't want them high profile yet. Yeah. So you know, this is 2015. This is only four years ago. This is not an old story. This is a pretty recent story. Dan Aykroyd, you know, well-known well actor. What's crazy is that they didn't confront Dan Aykroyd and even talk to him. No, just give him a mean look. Yeah. And a lot of these stories that they, they talk about these men in black being about six foot nine. That's yeah, how they describe tall. it. Six foot nine, tall, skinny, pale skin, no hair, no facial it's interesting. hair. It's interesting. Except one story I did come across said that they... His encounter was dark skin and really exotic facial hair. Hmm. Maybe that's one of the aliens hybrids. Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it's very interesting. Like these secret societies. If you got approached by a man in black, would you ask a bunch of questions? Oh, 100%. Or it, would I mean, you just I'd be scared? Stuff, I'd be on this podcast telling the whole story. You know what I mean? I probably would. Yeah, I would too. I'd tell you know, everybody. Now, some of these stories, like you said, they're 50s, 60s. It was very taboo. You can't. You yes. Know, you'd be locked up in an insane asylum. Yes. Probably, you don't you know? want, you, back then, you don't want to talk about that because, yeah, the probability of getting locked up into some kind of crazy house was highly yeah. likely. Nowadays, with, with especially with social media and the internet, you find these stories, it's not as, it's not as taboo. Well, now everyone has cameras in their pockets. Yeah, you record, you know, go, again, go back to episode 15 of our podcast. We share some of our UFO sightings. Oh, actually, one more story. There was a couple that were were investing, like they were researching UFOs. They were just a couple that were doing their own research. Well, I guess one day they came home and their house had gotten broken into, or their apartment was broken into, and only their UFO files had been rummaged through. Yeah. So. She started noticing that there was a guy standing outside their apartment building across the street staring at them all the time. And he was wearing the, the whole men in black getup, especially even with the bowler hat. So I guess she had called a friend and told him about it. He drove over there, witnessed this guy and snapped a picture of him. I mean, and this picture is an old time picture, like yeah, the brown, and white. white color looking yeah. photo. Yeah. Yeah, very old pictures. Anyways, it's showing this guy wearing the getup, but not looking very tall and not looking very skinny. Yeah, he's a little portly. So it makes you wonder, is this was this guy even had anything to do with it, or was it just a coincidence that he was wearing oh, that? Or like we were talking about, maybe some are human, some are humanoid. Right. He's just a human. <laughs> right. He just walks standing on the street. Yeah, he's not confronting people. He's just... Yeah. He's just... Wolf. That's a good tactic, though. What if they use those ones as... As a tactic to intimidate and scare, that's why they show up with these humanoid-like ones. Like, what's funny though is we'll get all of their, uh, like it seems like they came up with this suit, this black suit that looks normal with the bowler hat, but times have changed, and it looked in their uh, their getup hasn't. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's the same. It's their same damn suit from 1940, man. What the hell? <laughs> Maybe they don't age. <laughs> no. I would ask a shit ton of questions yeah. if I was approached. What were some of the questions you'd ask, you know? Who's your leader? What are you? Yeah, let me touch. Can I touch your skin? <laughs> I heard it was weird. Let me touch it. It, it might be me too. <laughs> Agent D. Agent D. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I find something like that. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know if I'd be serious around them. I guess it depends on their demeanor, but... If I seen them face through a fence instead of walk through oh. it... I... I don't know. I'd, I'd, I'd come oh, and be like, no, no, no. that was badass. Do it again. Let me see it. I don't know if I would confront them then. 
Okay, I saw that. <laughs> I'm telling everybody what I just saw. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if I would confront them right then. That'd be that'd be some spooky stuff. Because who knows what they could do, face through my heart. I don't yeah, know. they could. And they'd yeah. rip that sucker right out. So maybe, maybe if I saw it right then, I probably wouldn't say anything. <laughs> like, oh, well, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut on that one. But interesting. Oh, Very or interesting. what if you said, I'm gonna call the cops and I have a ton of witnesses over here. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook Live, YouTube Live. Oh yeah, that'd be another thing. And start recording right yeah. away. Be in the cloud. But I wonder if they could just shut your phone off. Ah, uh, yeah. They could just be like, shut up, shut up, shut up. Touch it, yeah. yeah. Ooh. It's, it's, yeah, it's very, it's, I find it very interesting. I find it very interesting. And, and then I also wonder how much of the movies are right. <laughs> None, probably just the suit, is it? Just the, yeah. the look. Just the look. I don't think anything about that movie <laughs> has anything to do with what has really happened in the world. Well, they wanted to recruit you. I'd be like, hell yeah. But you have to delete your whole life. I'm like, nope, sorry. I don't know. You're... That's what they do, right? They delete your whole life and you never existed. I just ask, can I just work from home? Do you have any like, jobs I could just work from home? <laughs> any local places I can just go <laughs> intimidate people at? <laughs> yeah, I can't just re come home at the end of the day. What kind of job is this? <laughs> no thanks. No like lifestyle. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want, I want to do that. I want to talk about Stardust Ranch. I, I think I should check into that. The Dark Side of the Moon, some stories I've heard about that. It's um, actually getting more attention. I've heard, a, yeah. I heard a story about it last year. And it was kind of interesting, a little kooky, and then yes, hearing yes. more things coming out from more more people it sounds. I, I want to hear more about it. Yeah, it's very. It is. It is very interesting. That's my key word of the day. All very interesting. So, if you guys have any stories about Men in Black you've heard of or know of or encountered yourself, let us know. Yeah, or someone that you know encountered, or if you've been abducted. Want to talk to us about it? Yeah, oh, I love to talk about that. Or have you been probed by by UFOs and aliens only, not your friends and spouses? <laughs> I don't want to hear about that. Or if you guys know anything about Area Fifty One or Area Fifty Two? Yes, I've heard some Area Fifty Two stories. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, hit us up Buco Boys Podcast at Gmail .com. That's where you can send it to us by email, or I'm sure we'll post something about this episode soon. You can you can Instagram, DM us. Facebook, Buco Boys. Yeah. Find us there, comment, message us directly. We are all ears. And good thing about us, we don't judge. No judgment zone. Exactly. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, that's the episode for this week. We appreciate you all. We love you. Take care. Peace. Bye.